What's up everybody, Jack from Half Grown. Today I'm talking about this guy. This is the Isheen Novice 3. Now, I reviewed the Novice 1 and the Novice 2, and I like the drones, but the packages, uh, the components that came with it weren't very good. Isheen fixed that with the Novice 3. With the Novice 3, you get a pretty nice remote, a good set of goggles, a hobby grade balance charger, solid tattoo 450 3S batteries, either two or six, depending on which package you get, I recommend the six battery package. And it all fits in here, this handy dandy carrying case. So stay tuned and I'll tell you why I like this Novice 3 over the Novice 2 and even the Novice 1. And actually, it's a pretty darn good all-in-one ready to fly package. So if you're thinking about getting into FPV, this is a pretty solid deal. Starting at $199 for the whole package, plus two batteries or 225 for six batteries and the whole package. That's probably what I would recommend. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little bit of video from the drone itself. This is me flying the Novice 3 using the Isheen included remote. Um, I did switch to my own goggles because I wanted to be able to record the DVR. So you're seeing two videos here. So one, the big picture, uh, that is what was recorded on board the drone. I threw a little SD card in there. Um, I used a little piece of tape to make sure that it stayed in in case I crash, or rather when I crash. Um, and uh, I also recorded from the goggles. So the lower right hand corner is what you see in the goggles. Pretty good picture either way, uh, but you won't get any breakup flying with that DVR. Now my goggles did a nice job, so you didn't see many breakups there, and I'm not going super far away. Um, but it, it is awesome to have that onboard DVR feature. It just gets better footage. And this is a fun drone. It was a cold, windy day, so I'm not doing some super awesome acro. Plus, it's just not quite as precise as my Tyrannus, this remote. So um, I had to kind of get a feel of it. Um, and as you can see, I'm still getting a feel of it. Uh, a little crash and burn action there. Pretty typical from me. All right, so let's take a look at the components. First off, I do like this bag. It's big, it holds everything in here quite well. Um, first component we're gonna take a peek at is uh, this set of goggles here from Yashin. Um, you know, we've got a circular polarized antenna here. Uh, they're pretty standard goggles. Uh, they're nice, they work well. They've got a nice big screen. Oh, we've got a standard layout here for your buttons, pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is how you charge it, it's a proprietary cable. Um, the thing about these that is really nice is they actually come off and you can use them as a standalone screen. So uh, that is a bonus for sure. The space they came out of is big enough um, to, uh, you know, if you do decide to upgrade your goggles, I can fit my uh, sky zones in there. No, no problem. Uh, take a look at the batteries that we got. I actually got six, one, two, three, four. I got two on the charger, uh, but they're all the same, right? They're tattoo uh, four fifties. Um, they've got a 75C rating. They're good, solid 3S batteries. Plenty of, plenty of punch. All right, let's take a look at the controller. Uh, nice controller. This controller is actually a clone of this controller, the iRange X. Um, I did really like this controller. It just was kind of buggy. Uh, I mean, in terms of feel and fit and function, it feels good. Um, pincher, thumber, whatever. Um, it'll work. I like the gamepad style. Um, and that is what we have here. So this is nice. It does run uh, some version, an odd version of OpenTX. Um, you can bind other quads to it. Uh, there's a USB, a micro USB cable down there. Um, and then I'm using one of, I lied, one of them's another charger. The other one's back here. I'm using one of those 450 LiPos uh, to power this thing, which is nice. It comes all set up and bound, so you're good to go with this. It is a 100% upgrade from the original uh, remote that came with the Novice 1 and Novice 2. This thing is garbage, hot garbage. Um, it works, but just barely. There's so much dead band, it's nearly impossible to fly with it. Okay, the charger itself is pretty basic. 2S, 3S, 4S. I uh, do not know much about it other than that. Uh, comes with a plug. Um, there we go. And here we go, this is what you want to see. All right, so let's take a look at the Novice 3. A couple of things right off the bat. We're gonna start with these motors. These are 1203 5500 KV motors. We're pushing three inch props. They're big, they're powerful, they do a nice job. It has very similar design as the uh, Novice 2. It is just 
as you can see, it is larger. Um, it also has bigger motors. These are 1103s. Um, the top plate is actually exactly the same. Uh, it's that little one millimeter uh, board with some built-in LEDs, which is pretty cool. Uh, they light up, they look neat. See that little Knight Rider action going back and forth. The uh, VTX here is actually switchable from 25 to 200 to 400. And you can see it also is a DVR. You can stick an SD card in that slot there and operate it with these two switches here. Um, it does run on smart audio, so that's good. Um, three millimeter carbon, um, you know, it does a, uh, it's stiff, but it could, could possibly break. If something's gonna break, that's gonna be one of these longer skinnier arms. Um, the camera is the Cadex uh, EOS 2, nice picture, 4.3. Um, it, it's, it's solid. Uh, we've got an F4 flight controller, XT30 connector. Uh, you'll notice I actually upgraded this antenna. Um, it is a UFL connection, which I hate. Um, you can see that I, I threw some welder glue on there. Hot glue will work, but UFL connectors are terrible. I, I have bad luck with them. They pop off all the time. This one did pop off, so I figured I was in there. Might as well upgrade the antenna. It was a standard uh, dipole like this one here on the uh, Novice 2. All the motors are plugged, so that means changing them is pretty easy. Uh, this one, actually, the uh, F4 board, it's an all-in-one. Um, it actually has a built-in SPI receiver, but it's actually got dual diversity. I ran one up, then I ran the other one down. So I've got one on top of the quad, one below the quad. Uh, we'll see. Maybe that helps with reception. Um, it's supposed to, but either way, this is a fun little toothpick. Definitely an upgrade over the two, um, and the components are really what makes this thing a hit. All right, I'm going to give you my final thoughts, but before I do that, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Betaflight on this drone. If you don't want to watch that, just skip right ahead. Okay, so let's go into Betaflight. Now, if you don't have Betaflight, it's a Chrome extension. Go ahead and add that. Um, you may have to update some of these drivers, add these to your computer. You can download them. They're free. Uh, it takes a few minutes. It's not uh, super difficult. I'm going to plug it into the USB, connect. And I'm going to look at and see what we got, right? You should see the drone. It should be level or at least, um, you know, if it's cockeyed on your desk, it should show that, right? And if you move it forward and back, it should rotate in the way that you're moving it. It doesn't. That's a problem. And um, ports are probably isn't anything for us to do in ports since it's already set up. Configuration. Uh, there are a couple things I'm going to look for, starting with right here, the name, right? You want it, you know, your call sign, you put something up there. Sometimes I'll put half chrome. Um, we're just going to leave it not as three so that uh, we can see that. Then down here, a couple of things. I like to fly with air mode on. That means the motors won't stop ever completely. Uh, I do that when I'm in act road so that I pretty much always fly that, right? So um, it helps with tricks, flips, and rolls and stuff like that. And I'll also turn on this beacon tone typically. Um, however, there is an actual native beeper on this drone. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. Right? If there wasn't a beeper already built into the drone, a lot of drones don't do that anymore. You turn that on, you flip a switch, and your drone will start beeping for you. So that's a really nice feature. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to mess with anything else. Just turning the air mode on, save and reboot. All right, so I'm going to I disconnected, reconnected there. Now I'm turning on my receiver so that I can make sure that... Everything is good. All right, so I can hear it beeping. I need to find the beeper. There it is. Okay, so looking at my drone, make sure my throttle, as I move the throttle, it moves the throttle. I pitch forward, pitch is working. Um, you can see your endpoints, they're not 100%. I can change that in beta flight if I want to um, with just some simple commands in the CLI. Um, now I'm gonna flip my switches and see what does what. So, all right, start with A is one. B is two, C is three, D is four, right? The uh, pots in the back don't do anything, right? Uh, it's in D8 mode, so that makes total sense. Now I'm gonna go down to my modes tab, and take a look at what we have here. So aux one is my arm switch, that's SWA. Um, okay, and you see as I flip the switch, it arms, or at least we go into army mode, it won't actually do that. Uh, Aux 3 um, is my angle mode. Um, so when it's all the way in the up position, nothing. Middle turns it on to angle mode. Down um, puts it back into acro. As I scroll down, 
Uh, my beeper looks like it's on aux 2, that's SWB. So if I want that to beep, that's what I'll do there. Um, and then aux 4 is not assigned to anything. I'm actually going to assign it to um, this flip over after crash. So I'm going to say aux 4. And then so when I flip my aux 4 switch to this position, right, um, then my drone, I can flip it over. I can try to flip it over. Okay, so I'm going to also show you how to set the RX range uh, so that your transmitter is as exact as it can be. Now, I'm in the receivers tab, and as I move it back and forth, you can see one end is 988, the other is uh, 2012, right? Um, 988, 2012, uh, really what I want them to be is 1000, 2000. So I can set that using CLI. So I'm going to go to my CLI, and I'm going to say RX range zero space 988 two, zero, one, two. I set it for those four channels. You start with zero, you go zero, one, two, three. That's just how it works, right? I'm gonna hit down um, to kind of duplicate that. I'm gonna change the zero to a one. Down again, one to a two. Down again, two to a three, and I'm gonna click save. Should be 2,000, 1,000, 2,000, 1,000, right? Um, pretty darn good. Now, let's go fly. All right, so you've seen this thing in action. I've talked a little bit about it. We've talked about the components. I've compared it to the Novice 1 and 2, but let me tell you why I like and don't like this drone, right? I like the components. I like it on paper. I like the DVR. I love the way it flies, um, but there are some things that you just got to keep in mind uh, when you're flying one of these. Ishin isn't known for super quality motors, and actually on a crash, I did ding one of these motors up. It's fixable. I fixed it before. I just got to take it apart, put the ba uh, magnets back into place, and then hope I don't crash again. But that really is something when you're learning how to fly FPV, you will crash. And when you crash, things will break. And when they break, you either fix them or you replace them. That's just the way it is. So uh, know that that's going to happen to you. I highly recommend you start with an FPV simulator. Before you even get this thing up in the air, you, you want to get some flights in doing that first. Let's talk about this remote. I do like it, right? It is absolutely an upgrade over most of the hobby grade remotes that you get, but these gimbals just aren't super precise. It flew pretty well on this remote, but then when I bound it to my Tyrannus and flew it with that, I just felt like I had so much more precision um, and the ability to fly was just better on my Tyrannus. But then again, the Tyrannus is a real legitimate quality remote, right? The QX7 is what I fly on, and it is really pretty solid, but it's gonna throw you back another $100. You can start with this, you can add models to this, but in the future, uh, if you're really serious about this hobby, you'll probably want to upgrade. That holds true with these goggles as well. Now, I like these goggles, they're really good. Um, I really enjoy the feature that you can split it apart and use this as a ground station, uh, where you can give this to someone so they can watch you fly. I, a lot of times, will give this to my kids so that they can kind of watch what I'm doing on the screen. They love that. But these goggles don't have a DVR, and they are long, and they do get heavy. I typically fly with these. These are the SkyZone O3 S's. A nice low-profile goggle, something from SkyZone, Amway, or Fat Shark is going to be nicer and it's something you could upgrade to in the future right all of these components will work for you now but no if you're serious about this hobby in the future you're going to want to upgrade one more thing uh, when you're thinking about getting an fpv drones like these small compact toothpick style drones even whoops that's what i recommend you start with you don't don't want to build a five inch they're big they're loud they're powerful they hurt um, if you mess up uh, but these guys, they're lighter, they're smaller, they're quieter. Um, they can do a lot of the same things that a big one can. Uh, they're safer as well. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So if you're looking for a good beginner to get into FPV, this Novice 3 is a pretty solid option. Hey, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com. We've got more information on this drone as well as others. And uh, there are links down in the description below and, and in the article if you happen to read that. Those are affiliate links and they help us out. So uh, if you want to keep seeing content on this channel, go ahead and click on one of those links or leave us a thumbs up on this video. Hey, thanks for watching. Good luck and happy flying.